What's good? Kelby Canick, publisher of Megan the Magazine, founder of the membership. Here along with Primrose. Miss Primrose. You already know what it is. She girl, Miss Primrose. Miss P-R-I-M-R-O-S-E with Indie Fresh Concerts and Artists You Dig. And we got a special guest here today with us. What's up, man? Alexander Aota. Just that's, that's the most it. artist thing that's you can it. do. <laughs> just my that's name. It. Y'all already that's know what it is. <laughs> I'm just here. <laughs> I'm just here. So like so you know normally I do this by myself and then Primrose was here last time and now Alexander is gonna be a f- fourth person next week by the end of the series it's gonna be oh, twenty of us at table. a table like Everybody. just, just stack <laughs> them on adding to it you already know um so today's topic ooh we got a good topic today we're gonna throw it to Alexander go ahead Alexander go ahead, ask oh uh, gonna throw it to me questions. yes because you because um. I think one of the big questions that goes around, and it's a topic of a lot of conversation on the internet, especially when it comes time to like a lot of the events and stuff that go on, is should artists pay to perform? And uh, today's resident artist, from the resident, from the artist perspective, we have Alexander. Mm -hmm. Um, Should artists pay to perform? Why or why not? And what are your thoughts on that? Well, <clears throat> my perspective on it, back when I was doing listen, shows. Listen, no, no, give that really strong response right, that you listen, gave. Yeah, that. Listen, he, he's yeah. like, nope, no, no, never. No, no. I mean, <laughs> not paid for him put a camera on never. and like, well, w- w- after pontificating. Right, was, well, look, we, we, just, we, we got we to get the conversation rolling. Once we get rolling. Personally, I would never pay to perform. Mm-hmm. But I was never passionate about performing. I'm right. more of like a composer i like to be in the studio i like to create so i was never the one that's like looking for the stage to get on brother you can't sit here with two feathers and face paint and tell me (laughs) that you don't like to perform i don't like i don't like performing on stages listen you look like you like attention you look like you understand the aesthetics and the image and the crowd look like you ain't gonna lie to me like right you don't come on my on my show line i don't lie I like to. This I man like, show up I with like, his own mics. I prefer. I prefer being on camera. Okay. Over being on a stage. Okay. It's a different art form. It's a different type of performance. Like right. when you're performing on a camera. To me, especially now with you know the age of social media, is more of like a personal connection on stage it's like really a performance like you're in front of a crowd and you oh, we are definitely show. gonna circle back to that right. thought <laughs> right. see now for me i need some notes <laughs> yeah, right now, some notes for me you're definitely gonna at some point in time pay to perform mm-hmm. and i think that's okay like i don't think it's a, anything bad about especially when you're a new artist and nobody knows who you are like a lot of these new artists think oh now you got to pay me to come on your stage and it's like who are you bro <laughs> like who are you for me to pay you and and just coming from a standpoint of putting on a showcase we pay a lot of money to put on a showcase so if you want to come and get in front of our audience because we have to now cultivate an audience to bring in front of you for you to get on the stage to perform too because you ain't doing that you ain't bringing no fans because you ain't got none so why am i gonna pay you why are you talking to on the artist like that they may and, have some fans all, i mean look i'm an artist so uh-huh. i get it you got fans, I got fans. are I got people paying people. you to perform people pay me to do something <laughs> 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 but just from the jump, like right. when nobody know you, why do you think that I should be paying you to get on my stage when nobody knows you yet? You're still building. You're still in that process. Right. So, yeah, come pay to perform. And I'm not saying you got to pay $150 to get on my stage to perform. But if you're in front of my people, what's a good I'm price? saying it's $140. <laughs> what's, a, what's, a, what's a reasonable price? What's a reasonable price for an up and coming artist to pay? I perform. mean, okay, so if, if if I'm guaranteeing you guaranteeing you a crowd about one, one fifty people, mm-hmm. you know, it's a small intimate crowd, it's not too big. Um look, fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. Still that's, that's a good, reasonable price. That's Come not pay bad. me fifty bucks, get on my stage, promote yourself. Now you're getting new followers coming and trafficking. And if you're doing it right, if you're promoting yourself correctly, you got your website, you got your cards, mm. you 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 out there, you talking to people, you're networking, you're getting out there. You're not doing any of that. If you're doing it right, <laughs> they're not hey, doing you ain't lying. Nice. No. You're you, not lying. You in your imaginary I, I world. Was. I've been I've been to these <laughs> showcases. Was. I've been to a lot of these like independent showcases. Mm-hmm. And that's one of the main things I would notice. Cause when I would go, I've always been more more of like the entrepreneurial like 
I'm trying to connect with the people in the room. Right. So, like, if you're paying to perform, in my mind as an artist, you're not just paying for that small moment when you're on the stage. Because right. you're, that's only a small that's part it. of that event. That's five If minutes. you just performed and you didn't meet anybody there, then you didn't get your money's worth. Nope. So. And, with, and, and here's the difficult thing with that is that is what they're paying for. See, it's like Mercedes, they sell cars. Mm -hmm. But a person buys a status symbol. Mm -hmm. It's like it, it doesn't matter what someone's selling. It matters what you're buying. So when people complain, oh, they, they're selling dreams. No, that's what you're buying. Buying is a dream. Like, they sold a service, they sold this thing, but you, like, yes, someone could sell a meeting for an A&R. Like, I'm going to meet with an A&R, and, and you go pay $3,000 to meet with an A&R. And the A&R is there, and you get your time, an hour or two, play your music and all that stuff, and nothing happens, nothing. and they scammed me. Mm -hmm. No. See, you didn't pay that money for the meeting for the A and R in your head, you thought I was gonna play my music. They was gonna love, love it. it. They was gonna they jump gonna on the table. On. <laughs> I need to sign you. And like you, you bought a dream. Mm -hmm. You bought an a opportunity. fiction that you created in your head, and not even an opportunity. It's a fiction. Like they know. I don't know when they hear this. Mm. When they like, yo, when I when I perform, they go mm -hmm. like they buy into, and and that's where the the price is very widely. From, like, I'll use South by Southwest, for example. You got stages that range from $200 to people pay as much as $10,000 to get on stages during South by Southwest in Austin. And it's all based on they just want fiction that. in their head of what they think is going to happen. happen people have never even been to South by Southwest. People are, oh, you got such and such on it? Like, that's one of the things, like, who you got on your stage? Like, Nah, bro, you ain't. I don't want you at this point because I know that you're buying into the fiction. You need to know who the celebrity is so you can. Oh yeah, I was with Ti. I was on this set. Like, and it's all these people with these and like you open for this person. You did this. Like, all right, what are you what are you doing now? Yeah, what happened from that? Yeah, mm -hmm. and so it's like I know what you're buying into. Mm -hmm. You're buying into hype. You don't have a real marketing plan. Right. You have no strategic. You're not about to be there early. You're about about to promote it. You ain't about to network. You and so like that's the problem with when artists are paying to perform, they're they're paying for the wrong things most of the time. They're not they looking paying. at it the right way. Because they don't know how to market themselves after that. Like, yeah, you can pay to get on the stage, and that's why I said it's okay. Pay pay to get on the stage if that's mm -hmm. what you want to do. Now, when you did bring up that point, like there are performances that you can do for free, and if that's all you want to do and that's all you want to go for, then go for that. You don't have to pay a dime, but it's still come down to how are you marketing yourself? What are you, what are you saying to these people when you get on that microphone? Are you telling the story? You know, are you connecting with the folks? Because, like, as an artist, because I've done this myself, when I came out the gate, I did have stickers with my Instagram on it, and I gave it to damn near everybody, me and my team. We was out there giving it to everybody. I didn't have my website at that time, but then eventually I got my website up so that there's a place that you can go to and check out more of me. You know, that was a marketing strategy that I had to learn. I had to, you know, listen to different people giving me advice and saying, hey, do this, do this, do this. And I took that advice, and I did it. And it actually, you know, seemingly worked out for me. But a lot of people don't know that. There's a lot of bad advice out here. Yeah. And it's like, and, and here's one of those, it's an industry thing. Like, you should never pay to perform. You should never pay to perform. Ever. Don't pay to open for people. Don't pay to get on nobody's mm -hmm. stage. Ever. Mm. From so, people in the industry. So, so you're saying that that's bad advice? That's terrible advice. Okay. Because this is, this is, yo, wait, wait, wait. this is, this is advice from managers, mm -hmm. from promoters, from marketers, from consultants, from anyone who doesn't provide opportunities to perform. Mm -hmm. A lot of them will say that. Say what? And, and that's kind that of a, you should not that pay. you shouldn't, that right. you shouldn't. And here's the thing is, and this is the, the terrible thing about like in this space, um, most artists are uneducated, mm -hmm. just being straight up. And that's why we're doing this podcast, right. to educate. And, and to educate from a holistic standpoint, not from a, I'm, gonna, I'm going to tell you what I need to tell you to sell you what I sell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so in, in this marketplace, a lot of bad advice is given for sales purposes. Yeah, Don't spend your money on that. 
because you could be spending it on this. Right? It has nothing yourself. to do with what you actually need. Yeah. So when people, it's like a lot of content, a lot of stuff that goes out online, where it's a lot of blanket, very general advice that is only applicable in specific situations. Because these same people will complain about the lack of artist development right. and the fact that artists don't know how to perform and you're performing along with the, the uh, track. Track, track and all this stuff. <laughs> I was like, well, where the hell are they supposed to practice at then? Right. Mr. Smart Mother. <laughs> like, so if they, they ain't posted, like, all right, so what did they post? All right, you could, you could purchase rehearsal time at a studio and practice performing, right? That costs money. Money. Mm -hmm. Right? But then you also don't get to see a response from an actual crowd. crowd. Mm -hmm. It's not a real world scenario where you, oh, the mic's out. Okay, now I need to use what the corded mics. Then, like, right? none of that. It's like, so it's all of these things that don't add up or make sense. And then it's like, and, but you'll complain about the results of them not practicing and not performing enough. And then tell them how they need to really get out in front of the people and like connect with it. Like it's a lot of very bad advice given to independent artists and, 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 and artists digest it because at the core, it's what they want to hear. Don't spend money. Like, artists fail mostly because their, their goal is to figure out how to spend less money, not how to make more. Mm -mm. Yeah. So it's like, oh, I can shoot my own video. That mm -hmm. saves me money. Oh, I can produce my own beats. That'll save me money. Oh, I can do my own marketing. That'll save me money. Oh, I can do this. It'll save me money. I ain't got to pay for that. Mm -hmm. But when do you start making money? Mm -hmm. Like, you can save as much. If you're unemployed and you have $5,000 in your bank account, I don't care how many ways you figure out how to save money, at some point you won't have any. You're still spending it. Mm -hmm. So you have to figure out how to get income coming in. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of those places where they're just trying to find, oh, I can save, but yeah, I should never pay to perform. And you're not developing your brand. You're not bettering yourself as a performer you're not networking and connecting you actually make i don't care if it wasn't anybody in there but the promoter the bar staff and five patrons if it's 10 people that's better than nothing mm -hmm. right all 10. and here's the thing you just said 50 dollars for 150 people yeah if you spend 50 dollars to perform in front of them 10 people that's five dollars a piece for someone to watch you perform your song from beginning to end. Run some ads on Facebook and see how many people you can get to watch your from beginning to end mm -hmm. with fifty dollars. Mm -hmm. And then you be able to actually walk up to them and talk to them, or for them to end up on your email list so you can contact them to give a digital comparison. Mm -hmm. But then beyond that, one of them is a DJ. One of them is a promoter who also probably has other events. Mm -hmm. One of them is the club manager. Mm -hmm. So there are other events that go on there. Mm -hmm. The rest of the wait staff. <laughs> Connect. But it's so we so busy trying to figure out a way. Save. Like so, I justify not spending money to go back to believing in yourself. Right. Like I, cause I like I don't want to spend this money. Cause I don't know if it's gonna come back. Like I don't. So let me figure out a way to. Yeah, I knew. The, yeah, yeah, or I shouldn't. Risk. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Yeah, risk, but. but never looking at it, it's like people assess risk, but it's called it's risk reward. Mm -hmm. You got to assess the risk, but you also got to assess the reward. Mm -hmm. And so if the reward, like if the ratio is right, then it's worth the risk. Like you don't want to risk a hundred dollars. Like if you give me and say, hey, give me a hundred dollars and um, in two weeks, I'll bring you back fifteen hundred. The reward makes sense. And you That's might awesome. like, yeah, I got you. What right. you cash out? No. Now, if I say, <laughs> let me get $100, and uh, in two weeks, I'll bring you back like $110. Eh. It's a $10 reward for, reward. for you to risk $100. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense. And so that's where we get into this when we when we talk about the like the paying to perform, not assessing the actual rewards and the benefits that come from these performances. Yeah. And just juxtaposing it with, I just don't want to spend this money. <laughs> like, that's really, 
And it, it, it get deeper on some psychological stuff. So it's not that you shouldn't be spending your money because you're going to have to spend your money on you something, know, your, your art. But like what I'm hearing is basically these performances just aren't adding enough value to the artists that are performing. Like, Depending on how they're. How you, what do you value? Right. What are they coming in they, for? I feel like any up and coming artist that's paying to perform, mm. they're paying to perform because they think somebody in that room Whoever was on that list of panel, the people that are going to be judging, they think that when those people hear them, it's going to lead to a direct opportunity that they can connect with that label exec or whoever they are, and it's going to help them further their career. Let me look in the camera real quick. Uh-huh. You're not that good. <laughs> <laughs> let me let me just talk directly to y'all for a second. You are not that good. But well, what if... Hold on, wait one second. Because they... <laughs> I want to reiterate the fact that you are not that good because here's the thing. As great as you may be, no, not even think, because there are some phenomenal artists and you're still not that good, Mm. period. Because as, as great as your music may be, people are unpredictable. Markets are unpredictable. And I don't know that me putting out your project will be successful. I don't know that you are mentally stable. I don't know that you are dependable. I don't know that you are consistent. I don't know that the people will like it. How many people have we heard? We've heard their music and think it's phenomenal, and they can't figure out how to pay their rent next month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's been people, like, you can really, like, think about the number of flops, major Labels have put out celebrities like like that that have the finances, have the connections, have all of this stuff, and they've tried to put out records on people and they failed. So it's not a a guarantee. So just because you make good music Mm -hmm. in a marketplace that's flooded by like good music is a fallacy. So that not even a fallacy; it's a fantasy. Like, so that goes back to when they pay because such and such is going to be there. And when he hears my, it's like it's you're, a it's a, you're a groupie. Undeniable. You're a groupie. You're way backstage. This, when he hears this. <laughs> Yo, it's like a groupie waiting backstage for Drake. Yeah. When he sees me in this gonna, dress. Gonna, oh, my God. Gonna take me and it's going to be a done married. deal. Yeah. On the spot. It's the same thing. You know so hold up. Has that, wait, has that never happened? Has an artist never gotten a legitimate opportunity from paying to perform at a place? Like, has a do the executives at these performances really go to find talent? Like, do they look and find something that they like and you know really do something with it? Like, I'm gonna let you go first. Okay, so <laughs> in my experience, the short answer yes, there there are those opportunities that come along, but. For what you think it is, that dream that you've conjured up in your head that is going to take you to the top and this is the only opportunity that you ever need to make it to where you want to be, no. Like, that's Mm. not real. You still have to do work. You still have to make numbers. You still have to be, you know, of substance and have something, a a really great product that you can market that people are buying for for it to go somewhere. You know, it still Mm. has, you still take steps. There's mm-hmm. no one opportunity, I don't believe, and I, I've not experienced it. There's no one opportunity that goes, you know, you, you, you were it, and we needed you, and now you're famous. You're Beyonce now. No. Mm-hmm. Yes. <clears throat> Something has culminated at an event. Mm-hmm. But it's like, if I go to the grocery store, buy eggs, milk, cocoa, all this stuff, and then I come home, and I crack two eggs and a cup of flour and all this stuff. And That's preheat the oven on 350 and then put it in the oven. 15 minutes pass, you come in, you see me pull brownies out the oven. Mm. You say, oh, you just pull brownies out the oven. And then you just open up the oven looking for more brownies. Like, you missed all the stuff Steps that, it took to get <laughs> that led up to that. And you've just, you've just, um, connected these two things alone without all of the context, all of the work, all of the everything that happened before that. So there have been artists who have been putting in the work, building a presence, and just 
flown under the radar that nobody that, that a person didn't know about or heard mumblings about or whatever. Like we talked about last week, we talked mm-hmm. about um, Glorilla for a perfect example. People mm-hmm. think she just came out of the woodwork with that one song, but when I went back and I looked at her history, I was like, this girl been doing music for a few years now. Mm-hmm. And that one song just took her from where she needed to be, but it wasn't necessarily the one song. She was doing numbers before that song. Mm-hmm. She was already meeting people, going out, doing shows, making videos before that song. She was in the studio putting in hours, paying money before that song. So she didn't just blow up out of nowhere, and now I'm living this fancy life. Like, now nah, she put in work. Mm-hmm. So... I don't think there is that one instance where anybody just came from, I just learned how to sing today and now I'm big tomorrow. The baby yeah. wore a diaper at South by Southwest. Right. And then the following that, everybody had, I got to perform it. You know, that's where the baby got on. That's where, mm. and it's like, no. <laughs> it was like, it's like, you know, you know, he had a lot of stuff going on before that. And then it was some stuff after that. Right. Like, it, 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 it's like, because people want to avoid the work. Mm. I want to associate the result that I want mm-hmm. with the least amount of work. So mm-hmm. what is the specific step? So it goes back to the, yo, what's the one thing I need to focus on? Should I do digital? Should I should I just do Twitter or should I do Instagram? Should I do it's always an either to go or viral. Right. Yeah. And so like and that goes back to your point earlier when when you were talking about um the necessity of performing when you have TikTok and you have mm-hmm. like all these social platforms and it's more personal and it's it's not. Because people say shit, people say things to you online they do. <laughs> that they would never say, say to you in person. Never. Because it's not personal. Yeah, because they can't see you. Because you're not a human. You're, that's an avatar. Mm-hmm. That, is, that is pixels lit up on a screen that represents you. Mm-hmm. It's not you. And so it's like we confuse the image of something. We confuse mm-hmm. the shadow with the thing. Mm-hmm. And so it's like... You, it, it gives you a way to project your image and your brand and all of these things, but it's not taken the same way as when people meet. Like, every man, I, that was one of the things, like, stop by every, every year. Everybody, like, because we had so many people that be on our posts and be in the inbox. You just, like, when I used to manage the inbox and stuff, like, oh, y'all this and this and scamming and this and like, and why y'all doing this and it should be free to this and nothing. Like, all right. And it's like, I don't care. Like, we do what we do. Like, and we've invested a lot of money. We do all these things. And then they come out and they see, like, oh, how can I get on? And then they see me interacting with people. And they, like, because I, t- I talk like this. This is who I am every day. Mm-hmm. I'm not an internet character or personality. I, that's why I don't, that's why I'm just now doing this, yeah. like, in a, in a structured format. Um, because I just be online and I just I'll be giving out advice. I used to do like free consulting sessions, let people just hop on IG, ask a question, and talk to them. Um, but people thought it was performative, and so it's like just like the amount of times I would hear when people would meet me out different places when I'm out of town, I'm like, "Yo, you you're really like this in real life?" Like, mm-hmm. oh, yeah, with you. And then I it just hit me. I'm not the Hey, YouTube fans! Like, I'm not that guy. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not about to. I'm not about to put on. Oh, like, I, that's why I'm not an artist. Yeah. Like, that's why I stopped doing like music. It was like, I didn't want to. I didn't want to have to. Yeah, I wanted to just be person. me every well, day. You can still be an artist and be yourself. That's a whole nother show because you can't. can't. You can though. You. you, no, you, you that's another topic. We gonna. All right, so we're gonna shoot two episodes today. <laughs> that's. <laughs> Um, So (laughs) Back to the pan Pan to perform So with with the With the pan to perform um, I'll say this And on the psychological side of things Artists who Say they'll never pay to perform Is like For me it's indicative of a deeper Psychological issue or concern it's the fact that they're unsure of themselves Mm -hmm. um that they don't they don't have confidence they lack self-esteem in the musical capacity Mm -hmm. and where this comes from for me and how i observe it and i can attest to it because i was an artist if everybody tells you something should be free 
all your family members and friends and stuff and just your eyes because you've never seen anyone else pay. People don't say, hey, I just we just paid to perform in such and such and such. They don't say that. Mm-hmm. They just, you see them, they're Perform. opening, they're performing. Right. And so from, a, from that perspective, nobody's paying to perform. Everybody's performing for free. And so if you're paying to perform, if you're, and then even, even once again, this terrible industry advice from people who don't know what they're talking about. And this is people who are in the industry, who are very successful people who have platinum plaques and all this stuff, who have never built anything from the ground up. There are people who may have made platinum records, but have never promoted them. Mm -hmm. There are people who may have, um, Grammy Award winning artists and they manage them, but they weren't the ones who did the on the ground promotions and doing this stuff. And so it's like you could be a real estate developer and have condos and high rises, but never installed a toilet. So at that point, you just need to call a plumber, not the real estate developer. And so that's kind of the the position they give some of this this terrible advice. Well, if it's hot enough, if it's good enough, it'll just come together and happen. And it's like, it's never been like that. Mm -hmm. And so in in that, if you keep hearing that, like if it, if you're, if you're good enough, you won't have to pay for it. Then when someone asks you to pay for it, that's saying that you're not good enough. And so now paying for the service, whether it's a performance or playlist placement or anything that has to do with promoting your music is subconsciously admitting to the fact that it's not good enough to get that on its own. Mm -hmm. And so that's a hard pill to swallow for most artists, especially when you're first starting out or very close. You're closer to the beginning of your journey than to the end of your journey. Because once again, you aren't that good. You aren't. You're not as great as you would like to think. Mm. Now you can believe in yourself. Yeah, I was terrible, and I believed right. in myself. Right. You can believe in yourself. And I made terrible. money. <laughs> <laughs> I made a lot of money right. with my whack records <laughs> and belief. <All> right. <laughs> the belief system. Yeah, I mean. <sighs> so where does an artist perform for free? Well, this is what I think. I think. Performing, you should be called to perform instead of you seeking out performances. Like, I feel like, especially with the internet, it's easy for you to be seen without you being on a stage. So if somebody sees what you're doing online and they want you to, you know, come to a venue and do it in person, then that would be a more organic way for you to get a performance and you wouldn't have to pay. But how do they know that you can perform if you've never done it? You can't. Well, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> if you've never done it and you start exactly. on the internet and they see you on the internet, I know you should let them marinate in there. No, 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 look, <laughs> let him this, marinate. This, this, in perform- that. this performance topic is a good topic because, from what I see, there aren't a lot of performers, like true performers, right. like you, Prim. You take performing seriously. Yeah. There aren't a lot of. You're a part of the very small percentage of artists that really are performance artists. Right. So I don't even feel like people Thank expect you. a lot from a performer. They expect you to get on the stage, hold the mic, and just and you know just well that's generational, and 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 to an extent, like I feel like like with hip hop, is like the bar is lowered. It's just lazy. Yeah, because it's because it ain't about music. Hip hop is like the the fan base, a hype beast. Like we just like what's hot. We don't like what's good. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yo, know, it's <laughs> whack trash. Like, but let it let it become the hottest new. Then you doing the dance and doing the challenge right. and everything. Uh, Hype see, beast. There's, there's, yeah. there's, there's that belief too. Like when you say performance, some people just believe performing is getting on the stage and just you know delivering their music. Mm-hmm. Right. People like me. When I hear performance, I'm like, okay, I got to entertain these folks. Mm-hmm. I got to exactly. do something to entertain these folks, not just let them hear what they already heard on Apple Music. I got to let them watch what they're hearing and make them picture it on the stage. Mm-hmm. So that's why it, it goes a little bit further for what, me when I hear performance. I'm like, okay, I can't just, oh, can you come perform tomorrow? Nah, I can't come to perform, perform tomorrow. I got to call my dancers. I got to get the outfits. I got to, mm-hmm. you know, we got to perform, rehearse and everything. You got to give me some time because mm-hmm. it's serious. Yeah. But a lot of people don't 
like you said, a lot of people don't see it like that. They're just like, yeah, I'll come grab the mic and deliver my verse. And mm-hmm. There it is. Drop mic drop. That might be but, enough for like a already known artist because that's what I was about to A lot of people to. that's here they're the just thing. showing up to see the artists that they like. They could just stand on the stage and do nothing and let the crowd. Well, sing. though they do that. Yeah, they have people do walkthroughs. Mm-hmm. They have people who host events, like yeah. just to because it's, it's about them being. Household. It's your brand. Mm-hmm. It's about them being around your brand at that point. It's yeah. not about it's it's the like quality of the performance. Like I'm just be straight up like. These people ain't fans of music. Ain't, ain't like people overestimate the number of fans of music. Yeah. Like people are not <laughs> fans of music. Fans of people. Like like the majority of people are not fans of music. That's why they quit buying CDs and stuff when they didn't have to buy them anymore. Because I don't put enough value on music mm. to spend this percentage of my income mm. on it. Now, I like music. Mm-hmm. I enjoy music. I listen to the radio. But you let me know I can get all of the music ever created for nine ninety nine. Right, a month? Right. And guess what? <laughs> if I told you that Apple Music was going to go up to $20 next month, you would switch to Spotify. Right. Mm-hmm. Without a b- bat in the eye. No matter if that meant that your favorite artist would get more money. You don't care. Right. <laughs> nope. And so it's like. Consuming music is a more communal thing. It's a part of our culture. It's a thing, but it's not. People people act like it's a necessity. People act like it's something like the individual music works in aggregate. Mm-hmm. Like, that's why all these catalog sales are happening, because music functions in aggregate. I don't care how big an artist is. Mm-hmm. If I take them off Spotify, people still going to have their subscription to Spotify. Mm. Because I care about the concept of music, not your not individual music. Mm-hmm. I just need something to work out to. Uh-huh. I got someone coming over. I just need a playlist. Yeah, like, yeah, like yeah. that's right. that's it. I don't need your music. I don't, I don't even know if R. Kelly's music is up on Spotify still or anything. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still paying for it. Right. 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 Point. <laughs> See, right. So, and that's that's the type of thing that that it that it is is. As an artist, like we, like this is why I'm here to dispel. I'm here to crush dreams. Mm. I'm here to. I am a dream killer. Dream crusher. Mm. Cause I want you to wake up. Mm-hmm. Cause you can't do nothing while you sleep. Right. You ain't gonna. You ain't gonna. You can't yeah. cash a check in your sleep. Say that. So <laughs> it's like when it comes down to it. I'm rich in my sleep. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> cash all my checks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So. Like, you got a whole bunch of people. Because people aren't fans of music, you got a whole bunch of people who are just going to show up because a celebrity is there. Because people want to be a part of a scene, an experience. Popularity contest. Mm-hmm. Um, clout. 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 Like, it's like that's a, this is the thing, like, I'll give you an example that removes artists from You're the equation. paying for the clout. We're going to remove artists from the equation. Okay. As in performance artists, like, Rappers, singers, and stuff. You got a DJ, right? Mm -hmm. The DJ has been crazy. Fantastic DJ. They will pay a celebrity 10 times what they pay that DJ, who's a phenomenal DJ, to come in there and DJ Mm -hmm. the same night. Because they know that people will come because that, that celebrity yeah. is DJing. Yeah. Even though that celebrity can't DJ and may just be running a mix set that's just playing or right. doing the most basic of blending and all that and just talking on the mic. Mm-hmm. And so it's not it's not about the we're not fans. The average person isn't a fan of music. Isn't that's why it's like where where music is where it is because we're letting general people determine what's hot and general people aren't fans enough of music to discern hey that's out of pitch and this isn't right and that isn't right mm. it's just like oh look at them tattoos or oh she's showing her ass and no uh, it's like i like that right and now Gimmick. anything can be a hit and be successful so when it comes to the performance piece it's like you can get by without being a great performer mm-hmm. if you have all the other stuff if working. If your brand is strong. Yeah. But yeah. now if you go up on stage with none of that, 
it doesn't work. Yeah. And and and, and being a performer, like I I, I I put it akin to like the performance opportunity is like if you've ever been in like Sam's Club or Costco or anywhere and they like, yeah, you got AT and T. Like you're like yeah. you know how many times you've seen those ads and thrown away the mailers and stuff, mm-hmm. but when that person like yo who's your cable provider, it was like uh yeah we got Comcast. Right. <laughs> I got to think about it and talk to you for real. Like, Ex- yeah, yeah, you yeah. and and it's because when it's real life when mm-hmm. you're really in front of people, it's substantially more impactful. So while I may have ignored your video clip that I went by, mm-hmm. while I may have. Watched it and thought it was pretty cool and liked it, but I ain't follow you. Right. I ain't do none of that. Now you on stage somewhere and you perform it, and I see the energy and you you're selling it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You're selling me like that is your that is your opportunity for you to do whatever the product demonstration is to show you, hey, this is how it makes juice and lemonades and it does all this, mm-hmm. and you end up buying some. BS from the middle of the mall where they didn't stop you and took the, you know how they do, <laughs> and, and got you to spend, like, I was not here for this. Right, right. <laughs> so it, 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 that's what it is. It's, it's the stage is where you can give out your samplers. Yeah. And, and you get bring people into the experience, and then you go up to them afterwards and talk to them and network with them. And, and like, yo, they like that. And that's why it's so important to pay to perform, y'all. Not to pay to perform. <laughs> See, I do that. Like when you, you said perform. it like that, though, <laughs> like when you put it that way, yep. the stage is the artist's opportunity to sell themselves, yeah. their product. It's a platform. So it's kind of like literally, if you're a business <laughs> and you pay for a vendor spot. Yes. Mm-hmm. You're so a vendor. You're yeah. a vendor. Yeah. <laughs> Except y'all don't like making money, going back to my other point. You don't have no merch. You don't have no CDs. You ain't got no stickers. You ain't doing nothing. No. You just paying to perform. Now, mm-hmm. if I pay for this space mm-hmm. to vend my T-shirts mm-hmm. and whatever, and I just show up with one on, like, look at this. <laughs> 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 then I want to talk stuff about the mm-hmm. promoter of the festival. Right. <laughs> so they, they had his name, but it was me. Yeah. I, didn't stuff. I didn't bring what I could bring to. Okay, so Prim, myself. you've paid to perform places, right? Yeah. And you've brought like your merch and stuff. Yep. Have you actually sold stuff at those Hell same events? Yeah. Yes. There yes. you go. Because I, once I perform, I then get off the stage and go talk to these people, mm-hmm. and I sell that right there and then. You just saw what I did. You like that? You know what I'm saying? I'm mm-hmm. talking to you. Who are you? Where'd you come from? How far did you get? You know, you have to connect with those people thereafter and make them wanna. Because now they're talking to the person. They're not just seeing what they saw on the stage, which which helps what mm-hmm. they saw on the stage. But now I'm talking to you. I'm just like you. I'm just trying to make a dollar. Can you support? You know, mm-hmm. it's how you come at them. It's how you talk to them. It's how you relate to them. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I've done that, and I still do that. Like I'm not above any of that because mm-hmm. I'm not. You know, the Nicki Minaj, the Beyonce. And even if I was, I have a team doing it. You know what Ooh, I'm saying? Oh, she says she's not the Nicki Minaj, Beyonce. She ain't compare herself to none of you dolls. Out there. <laughs> 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 but, I see you. Go ahead. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'm just you know, you just got to put the work in. You got to know how to market yourself. It always comes back down to marketing. But it's, and that's where I think you should put most of your money into. But that's another another topic for another yeah. day, you know. Yeah. And so and so I guess in wrapping this up, like paying to perform, it makes sense. But you got to look at it as a cost benefit analysis. Like I'm not going to advertise just on any platform. Right. I'm not going I'm not going to run ads for my magazine or my platform in something that I'm not going to spend $5,000 to promote what we do in home and garden. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or on HGTV or on CNN cuz that's not where my audience is. Right. Mm-hmm. Like just wanting to be in front of people doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. And then sitting up advertising even if it's the right BT but if I'm advertising something and it has a link or it has the wrong messaging or it has links and stuff that takes them to a website that's under construction or not working and stuff like that, it's like, how am I going to see a return on investment? And so, and like going back to what you said about marketing, all of this boils down to marketing and the fact that most artists don't have an understanding of the fundamentals of marketing. So they're paying for promotion and just doing, creating activity that actually leads to nowhere other than the activity. So that's when you get to paying to perform and not paying to 
build your brand and get performance footage so that I can send it over to this festival and go. then all of these things. So it's like you want to open for these major acts and you want people to pay you to perform, but you haven't built up your performance from practicing. You haven't built up your brand from going out and networking and seeing how people actually respond and work rehearsing your set. Mm-hmm. The same way comedians go out yep. before they do a special on HBO, they've traveled the country doing three shows a so, night, 50 different mm-hmm. cities, trying material, tweaking this, tweaking that, and then they get it right. And then when they, they do this Big stage, yeah, it's immaculate. The mm-hmm. main part of when you're going out to a show, and we're talking about should you, should you be paying for shows, right? Mm-hmm. right? So should you be paying for shows? Yeah. Definitely should be paying. You should be investing in yourself, investing in the platform so that you can promote and market yourself. But the marketing part is a huge piece when you go out to these shows. You have to make sure that you are marketing yourself, not just going out there performing on stage and then dipping out and saying, leaving the rest to God, you know? But, you know, like, all right, so that, and it goes back to the point that it's all marketing, and that is a topic that we need to touch on because most Artists don't understand marketing. They don't even understand what it actually is. And so they do a lot of things that are promotion, and they consider it marketing. And so they end up, because there's no thought that goes into it, it becomes activity for the sake of activity. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to perform, or I want to get on playlists, or I want to do this thing never with a... an actual end goal in mind. Mm. And so that's, that's, that's what it, um, it, it tends to be. So when people are paying to perform, they're spending money literally to perform. And they just have hope, but they don't have Man, a legit they don't plan. Even, they don't even have hope sometimes. Like, mm. and, and like hope implies like, cause they don't even be believing I don't even believe that it's going to happen. They don't. It's, I, and I joke, I used to joke about Atlanta a lot. It was like, this is, this is where rappers come to vacation. It's like people come on a rapcation. <laughs> they come down here, they pay some money, get in the studio, go plug in with this producer, go perform at this open mic, take a whole bunch of pictures and never release any music, never do it. It's just like, it just come down here to spend money. Right. To say, yeah, yeah we was down in Atlanta, yeah, we had yeah, tapped yeah, in with... Is. Like that's it. That's cute. It's like, and so it's like, is that person paying to? And it's like, this is like I joke about this a lot. It's um, it's like LARPing. It's like this is like um a lot of a lot of like cosplay. It's hip hop cosplay to an extent. You go to an open mic or showcase. It's like Dragon Con or Comic Con or something. It's like, look, oh, you came as the Migos this year, like. <laughs> And so it's like everybody put on to, and it's just like a very performative off the stage. So that's why a lot of networking doesn't happen because people pretending that they own and pretending like, yeah, I'm we, too good to approach y'all. And we go kill it and just, it's just, it's a fantasy. They're mm-hmm. playing out a fantasy, they're role playing. And you saying they're not even paying, believing that anything's going to come from it? No. They just want to be in the they room. They just want to feel. That's a feel. It's moment. industry tricking. It's like right Magic now. City. I'm important right now. It's like just throwing wow. the money up. Like, you know she don't like you. Right. <laughs> Your shoes leaning over, bro. Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, but it's like just to feel like it, just uh-huh. to be there. Like, oh, we had it going crazy. We was just down there. It was going. We messing the city up. I'm like it's so Atlanta. Wow. All right. <laughs> wow. And so it's like so. I can't wait to to see what the artists w- watching say about that part. Because in my mind, I'm thinking the people that's investing, the people that's trying to get on, I'm thinking they all have this strong belief and desire. Like this is going to lead to something. No, for me, like for my career. Not always. Is that what you do with everything you spend money on? No, but with a performance, if it's connected to something that you're doing seriously, like. But if it's some, everybody ain't serious about music. Right. They want to see if they can make it. No, just because you got a membership to the Y, does that mean? Everybody okay. who played, you know, okay. AAU ain't. <laughs> okay, you, if you're spending money, though. 
the debt. What is money? People ain't serious about their money. No, it's not real. I mean, here's the thing. I say this. <laughs> here's the thing. That's the name. Um, here's the thing. Right. Here's the, thing. <laughs> the reality of it. You care about your money, mm-hmm. but you care more about your experiences, especially millennials and Gen Z even more. Like, I have more of a Gen X vibe. That's why I made money doing music. Because, like, you ain't going to get me with some experience. I need some money. <laughs> like, you ain't selling me no dream. So they paying for the experience. Yeah, the experience. That's what, like, that's, that's the thing. Y'all don't care about ownership. Like, in these generations, ownership is a is an archaic concept. That's why you're fine with Uber and Lyft versus owning a car. You're fine with renting instead of buying. You're fine with Spotify instead of CDs or purchasing downloads. As long as I get to experience it and use it when I need it. It's true. You're good. Mm. That's too true. Until you realize that we can turn it off at any time. Yep. <laughs> like, until you realize that they rose the rent double. Like, <laughs> like and so, like, because of the, the dynamics is shifting in the culture. Mm. Like it, it all like so. There's a lot of people who are fine with just the experience of, I want to be on stage or I want to be in the studio. Like, bro, I've I've had people like I do legit marketing. I help people make money. I have members and clients well making well over six figures, right? Off of music that you've never heard of from doing little simple stuff like, oh, do this, now do this consistently. You're spending too much money on that, and it's like focusing them on doing the right things. And I have people who come to me and I have like, hey, this is what we need to do. I'm like, nah, I don't want to do that. But I got such and such. I just want to be in the, can, can I get in the VIP next to, you know, God is going to be there. So I'm trying to get in the VIP. That's and I'm like, I got spending. It. Spending on that experience because yeah. they want to take them selfies yep. and show Clout. the Internet. I was here with such and such. Drop the names. Yeah. Clout. Yeah. Like that ain't that ain't for a career. <clears throat> yeah. That's for Katrina. <laughs> that's for an old girl that curved you in the third grade. Look and at you me just, now. Yeah. Yeah. It's all the yeah. just all the wrong stuff. <laughs> like it's and so like so wow. people are spending for the wrong reasons. Wow. So they're not doing and they're spending a lot more than fifty dollars, Prim. Okay. Yeah, they spend. I didn't seen some crazy amounts. Yeah. yeah. So, but it, and and here's the thing. But who are, who are we to say what's crazy for someone else? It's what they value. Yeah, and that's and that's the whole thing. I, like, you buy Yeezys now that, that Adidas dropped them. I'm not, because I wasn't buying them when Yeezy was there. <laughs> like, I don't value that. <laughs> like, it don't make me no difference. Yeah. So all of it's crazy to me. Like, mm-hmm. so it's like that's the that's the thing that Somebody it comes down else, to. They, they value that. So, so if we if, if, and so just and sum it up with the performance stuff. If you're gonna pay to perform. It's okay. Just look at it as it's, a, it's really a marketing expense. Mm-hmm. But whatever you're paying, you need to look at what is the reward because mm-hmm. you're spending the money. The money is the risk because it's an opportunity cost because you can't spend it again. So if I pay X amount of dollars to perform at this event, then I can't spend it on other things. Mm-hmm. So how does the money that I'm spending, um, how do I see value out of it? One, you're going to be on stage, so it's opportunity to perform. So if you look at how much does it cost to rent a rehearsal studio to perform your music, and then you could equate that into the cost of it. Mm-hmm. Um, the value of working with a DJ, working in a real-life scenario, actually getting in front of a crowd, all things that you won't get in that rehearsal space. Mm-hmm. Um, the fact that when you're performing, you can actually connect with the people who view it. Things that you're not going to get off of Instagram and SoundCloud. Well, you can get that more so off SoundCloud, um, you, but not off of um, like the Spotify and the DSP. So people can hear it, but you don't really have control of how much of it they hear. You don't have a chance to make a personal connection with them after it. Um, when you're performing, you also this is an opportunity for you to get performance footage, which you can leverage to get future shows where you don't pay future shows where you possibly get paid. Um, It's like just a variety of things that you can do at a performance 
Um, one of the, the, I feel like the worst things that I hear independent artists say is, and this is one of those go-tos, man, ain't nothing but a bunch of other artists there. Love mm-hmm. saying that. Mm-hmm. That lets me know what you think of artists. Right. Mm-hmm. That let me know what you think of yourself. Mm. I ain't nobody. <laughs> Why would I want to be around people like me? Right. I'm pathetic. <laughs> mm-hmm. It's like, so that's the, and, and that is not a conducive to you ever being like, you're not going to be successful. Mm-hmm. Like, and I, and I break it down very simply. I want you to just think of yourself. Do you know six dope people? A producer, an engineer, um, a magazine owner, <laughs> like and like other artists, like people who could help you in your career. You have an attorney, you have a publicist, you have all these things. So you have six people that you know. So if it's twenty other artists in there, there's a hundred and what fourteen contacts in there for you mm-hmm. that you could possibly be expanding because it's not just them; it's the people they know, right? Mm-hmm. And so when you fail to look at that, mm. and then you want to just sit up, what time I'm performing? When am I performing? When I'm going on? You know, I got people here. I'm trying to go. Like, mm-hmm. you and the promoter, the promoter already know you got your email. Go talk to somebody else. Right. <laughs> and, and, and those are the things. But when you, when you fail to, to execute, mm. and, and I, don't, I don't blame it on artists because it's like a lot of them, a, a lot of, a lot of people are value blind. Mm-hmm. They like, be missing the moment, missing the value. Yeah, and They're so just there, you see things, but you don't see the value. Mm-hmm. Like so, and it's like joking about Prim because she also used to be like, "Nah, you shouldn't pay to perform back in the day," and then you start putting on the showcase and doing like, "Oh, the DJ Carlson, how much? Yeah. How much <laughs> is the venue? Yeah, right. They need security. We need one uniform officer. Right. How much is that? Right. Okay, the sound guy isn't included." <laughs> That was, real. Like, that was really my experience. I thought, man, I know. I be and we haven't even talked road. about this before. Like, I just know this road. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and when I, I think the very first performance that I had to pay for, um, I got on that stage. Um, they were selling a dream, saying, "Oh, the the one who wins, you get this X amount of money, and you get playtime, and get to be on this radio station." And I thought my performance was the best, so I'm like, "I'm gonna win," mm-hmm. and then I didn't win. And I was like, man, it's some old bullshit, you know. But even just seeing the value that was there, I knew who they was going to have. The person who won. <laughs> the, the, per- the person who won. It's a list. Of, no, we could just the do a list. The person who won was somebody that had been in their camp, been paying into what they got going on, and, their, and, and she won. Their, but her performance wasn't like no, nowhere had, near. She had a dancer. She had, she had a bunch see, of dudes on stage see, with her. See, but that's disrespecting the craft. No, it's not. disrespecting no, no, the craft I'm a, I'm a, of performing. No, 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 no. I'm a, it, it is, bro. No, no, stop. All right, so we're going to end it here because I'm going to break it down for you. You could be right and you could also be wrong. So I'm going to give you the flip side of this, right. right? You went up there with dancers and all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Popping but, confetti cannons, doing, right? Everybody was like Ooh. a spectacular performance. <laughs> right. Entertaining. There you go. But what was it the culmination of? Mm. So if she had been already working with their camp and doing a service, yeah. they know what her social media file, and mm-hmm. they just seen her do this. She did an interview over there. They did all this, mm-hmm. and they know that they've already invested, invested and all right stuff right. is going on. So like, dang, while this is a great performance, we don't know that we can turn this into money, right? But it's a performance showcase. They're supposed to reward the best performance, because right? That's what we think, and that's what we. That's what, that's no. what we like, that's, hear, and I and I get that because I, I heard yeah. that too. That's exactly what the value that I took it as mm. this face value was. This is the performance showcase, and they're only going off of this right here. So this right here, I need to make it go. That's what right. they should but, be doing, though. Nah. Now, now with, do that with your money, then. Right. Like just go. No, <laughs> like, I'm I'm I willing to lose. Now, Right. Cause you had a good night. Right. <laughs> nah. I mean, <laughs> yeah. See when when now, it when when it's your risk reward, mm-hmm. then you like think about that. How your fifty dollars? Like, what are they gonna offer me at this? So, <laughs> like, so with your fifty dollars, you got to get some kind of colossal reward. It's an A and R there, an executive there, and all mm-hmm. of this stuff in order for you to spend fifty dollars, right? Mm-hmm. But then they put on this whole event. They're giving away whatever sum of cash and investing resources and connections and all of this stuff, and they're supposed to risk it all on you. Just because you had a good night, night and not take into account, let's look at their social media followings and any of that other mm-hmm. stuff. Mm-hmm. Like that's the that's the thing you got to mm-hmm. see it from all sides and that's the that's the the thing when we come to this 
is artists never look at things from a Ooh, professional right. side. Yeah. It, it's yeah. like they, it's like it's always always artist mode and how does it benefit me? That business side is a whole different mindset and a whole different mind game. Because I had to get there too. Mm-hmm. That's why I said, like, that's when I started Indie Fresh and I started seeing things because my money was being spent just to put on something for somebody else. And then I was like, hold on. <laughs> you going to pay because I got to pay. How, how, that, how, how, uh, all right. So, we're going <laughs> to. How long and how? Tell us about the wrestling with that. Did you wrestle with that? Like, like I don't want to charge. I don't want to. Like, ah, so I'm becoming what I. I'm no, becoming the villain. I'm becoming the villain. Because my very first one, I didn't make anybody pay. The very right. first one, and you didn't I make no on, money. I didn't make no. <laughs> you you lost money. Dollars. No, you made okay. negative, negative dollars. No, like, no, no, I, I got the deck. Right, right, right. <laughs> So These financials ain't financing. Right. <laughs> then the second one, I was like, "All right, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to, somebody gonna have to pay something." So I, I, I let some pay for some slots, and then some I still gave away. But that third one, I was like, "All oh, y'all paying for slots?" Like mm-hmm. it was, it was just, I was like, "Y'all have to pay because the money that I'm putting up now, and I'm in a bigger venue. And that venue cost me X amount of dollars, and all these people are coming out, so they have to see certain things. I have to get stepper and pizza. I have to get, you know." It had to just be a certain way now because I did it the first two times. It was like, eh. But that third time, I was like, nah, bro. Yeah. It just don't, it's not making sense. I'm losing too much money and I still have to pay my people to work this thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, at the end of the day, I can't just be here losing money for what? For y'all to be like, good job, Primrose. Like, no. It it wasn't worth it. Yeah. So, nah. But when you're an artist, that's what you expect. But when you're an artist. Everybody supposed to lose so I can win. Why don't y'all just lose? Y'all supposed to be the Washington Generals. I'm the Globetrotters. Like, just, let me spend a ball on your head. Have you, and have you done the like. cash prizes? Cash prizes yeah. at your shows? Man, yeah. So, and do you reward the best performer? Yeah, mm-hmm. 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 That, that's how it's we supposed did. to be. But and so I agree with that because in that instance, I mm. said, all right. Um, I had my judges, my celebrity judges, and they judged based on the best performance. Mm. So we did first, second, and third place, first and second place. Um, they still got, like, rotations. Everybody got trophies. They got rotations, some other stuff. But the first place winner, they got a cash prize. And even that was still, like, <sighs> I probably know. shouldn't have put this in the package. Right. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> like, I did, like, oh man. Gosh. It was like. When it came down to it, it was like, I shouldn't have. Like I'd be straight up. Like mm-hmm. I've taken many L's so people could take W's. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like like yo, I was like, and and that's the thing when it comes to the paying to perform, yeah. artists often are concerned with how much money the promoters making, not mm-hmm. their value. See, they don't. They're not looking at their value. They're looking at someone else's value. How does this? How does this person box. get? And that's why you lose it. And, and mm-hmm. you you worry about everybody else's uh-huh. pockets, but your own. Yeah, <laughs> like, and I've lost friendships off of that. Because yeah. they're looking at everybody else's money, but I'm like, you have to realize, like, the amount that the one person who's heading all of this is even paying out just to make sure that y'all mm-hmm. get paid something. Mm-hmm. I ain't getting paid nothing, right? Essentially, you know what I'm saying? Like, but I'm still making sure you get yours so that we can keep doing this, and that one day down the long run. We all gonna be good, but yeah. a lot of people don't see it like that, mm-hmm. and they walk away from the table. And it's just like, all right, well, I gotta keep going. Yeah, <laughs> gotta keep going. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. you gonna pay to perform? Nah, I'm not. I'm not performing <laughs> at all. Nah, I'm not performing. Like I'm not do, performing do you for under, free. Do you? Do you? Do you? You're not performing for free. I don't want to perform. Okay. So okay. I'm not, I'm not even in the conversation of performing, so I can't. So, so as a so as but our resident artist, as our resident artist, has this conversation impacted the way that you see paying to perform? Yeah, and it, it goes back to like my initial perspective is if you're paying to perform. Mm-hmm. I was already feeling like you're paying to be in the room and to do more than perform. So if you're just there to perform and that's it, then I don't see the value in that. But if you're going there with the way Primrose goes with her merch, her people, she's trying to network, she's meeting whoever she can meet. That's what you should be, you know, going into those rooms doing. And I feel like if you spend your money to do that, then it's, it's a a worthwhile investment. But if, if not, if you're going, if you're spending money to give minimal effort, then I don't feel like that's worth it. Unless like we were saying, you're just there for the look and you think that's all the value you want from it. Then you just want to be there and show people you was there and go for it. But I just think that's, that's silly. (sighs) Why are you being a hater? That's silly. (laughs) It's like, why you get on a roller coaster? It lets you off right where you got on. Like, cause I wanted to go on a roller coaster. Like, let people have their fun. Like, <laughs> hey. Hey. 
Yo, we out of here until <laughs> next time. We getting off right where we got off. <laughs> Yo, once again, this is Kelby Cannon, publisher of Megan and Magazine, founder of the membership. It's Miss Primrose. That's Miss P R I M R O S E, Indie Fresh Concerts. Mm. I got so hold on, I gotta spell my stuff out all rhythm. <laughs> K-E-L-B-Y-C-A-N-N-I-C-K. <laughs> no, baby, tell me what you want to do. <laughs> And yeah, I'm Alexander Ayota. Once again, lackluster artist. <laughs> He's a writer. He's a writer. He's not. You're a writer, right? Yeah, I do that. All right, that makes sense. There we go. <laughs> First name, last name. We out. All right, y'all.